Welcome to Charity Village Connects. Today we're talking about a concerning issue for the nonprofit sector in Canada the decline in public trust in charities and nonprofits and their leaders. These insights come from a number of reports based on surveys conducted in recent years and important research based on the data. Joining us today is Steve Ayer, who has deep experience in strategy, research, and sector insights. He's worked in analytics, research, and marketing in the charitable sector, formerly at the YMCA of Greater Toronto, as well as a senior researcher for Imagine Canada, where he's authored numerous publications on social impact and revenue strategies for nonprofits. He's also written for Charity Village's newsletter, Village Vibes, on this important issue. Steve is here to help us understand the impact and the challenges created by the public's diminishing trust in nonprofit leaders and their organizations. Welcome, Steve. Thank you very much for having me, Mary. Let's start from the beginning. Can you provide some background to the A Better Canada report that was published in 2020? What was the purpose of the report and what did it cover? Yeah, the Better Canada report was published by the Environics Institute for Survey Research in partnership with Van City. So it was a study conducted in August 2020, trying to understand in that initial phases of the pandemic, how Canada had been impacted by the pandemic. And the Environics Institute for, has been surveying Canadians about a variety of social issues, their sense of belonging, their sense of trust in Canadian society uh, for decades. And so what they were trying to do is understand early in the pandemic how a lot of those factors had been impacted by the pandemic, but also with this really long term context with the Environics Survey Institute surveying about some things going back to uh, the 1980s and having a number of different studies uh, conducted in recent decades. So it was really trying to understand specifically how Canada was doing at that point in time. Obviously, so much has unfolded since then. So there are certain insights that are very enduring and there's others that uh, the, we, it might be a bit harder to interpret in uh, the sense of the additional almost two years now that we've been living through this. Uh, that being said, uh, the project was led by the Andrew Parkin of the Environics Institute, and I was not involved with it, uh, but I did uh, help work with them in terms of the data on the charitable sector, trying to understand the decline in trust in charities uh, that they saw. I mean, because it really was stunning uh, how much it declined over the last decade. And what we say in the, uh, the article, when they surveyed about this topic in 2009, uh, we saw that uh, 72% of Canadians said they had trust in nonprofit and charity leaders. When we see the survey in, uh, was conducted in August 2020, it was down to 50%. I mean, this is a staggering decline over a bit more than a decade. So it was really what the article we did in Charity Village was trying to unpack what exactly was going on here. Was this a real phenomenon? Was this a temporary blip? And really, you know, I think what the conclusion we saw, I'm, I'm going to uh, far into some of the details, but uh, uh, maybe I'll let you ask a few more questions. But like, I mean, it really was a staggering uh, decline over the course of just a decade. So um, I want to take you back to the, the actual article that you wrote for Charity Village um, in June 2021, where you sort of solidified the data that came out of the research that was done. And maybe you could give us the highlights because there were some really disturbing trends that you, you noted. Yeah, absolutely. So when we, when Ned Rocks Institute looked in 2009, they found that 72% of Canadians said they had uh, confidence in leaders of not for profits and charities. When they surveyed again in 2020, that number dropped 22 percentage points to 50% of people had trust in charity leaders, which means half of Canadians do not have trust in charity leaders. This was such as a precipitous decline. What we tried to understand was is this something a one-off? This study was conducted in the middle of uh, when uh, We Charity was even investigated by Parliament, or is this actually a really dramatic trend that charity leaders uh, really need to understand? And so we looked into and see what others had found uh, that had been looked at at the same time, because Enron Institute had looked only in 2009 and 2020 and nowhere in between. And overall, we were able to find 27 separate surveys that had looked at trust in charities over time. And really the trend was quite clear. The surveys that were conducted in the 2000s, about 70 to 80 percent of people said they were trusting charity leaders. The surveys that have been conducted in the most recent years, it was usually in the 50 percent range. So, I mean, it was pretty clear. It's difficult to say exactly at what point in this last decade trust dropped, 
but it's very clear that there was about a 20% drop in all of the most recent surveys versus the surveys have been looking at the same topic uh, 20, uh, 10, 20 years earlier. So these findings were obviously um, certainly supported by these other surveys. And I'm, I'm assuming that these are the surveys, um, proof strategies, the can trust index, um, and, um, and similar kinds of surveys that were done at various times in that gap between when a Better Canada report was actually uh, doing the surveys. Um, so they, they really supported what you, what you had noted when you were doing this research. Is that correct? Yeah, there were a number of the really prominent surveys about trust that have been conducted over time. So the Edelman Trust Barometer, uh, the Can Trust Index conducted by Proof Strategies, and then uh, some uh, looking back a bit earlier, there was quite a few studies um, conducted by the Mutart Foundation out in, uh, that were conducted uh, more in the uh, 2000s. And they really were finding prior to the, the Great Recession, there was really not a huge amount of change in trust uh, in charity leaders. So they measured it a couple different time periods and found very little change. So I think they, uh, for whatever reason, decided to uh, discontinue. So their data was sort of looking at that period from 2000 to 2010. Um, we see the uh, Edelman and the Canadian Trust Index were both created in the last decade. So there's uh, those data points for more recent things. And uh, the Enveronics Institute survey serves that gap of, they did quite a bit of work in the 2000s. They had a bit of a gap, and then they've been surveying again, asking some of the same questions again, 10 years later. So. Um, again, about charity leaders. So there's a bit of a, um, there's, a, there's no perfect data source, but uh, the ones that we did see that had been looking over time, like it was clear that there was a pattern of decline. So again, be, even though a Better Canada survey was actually done in August 2020 during the height of the We Charity scandal, it seems clear that that wasn't a blip. I mean, this was not because of the We Charity scandal that we were seeing this huge uh, decline. Uh, is that, that's really a, effectively what you're saying, correct? Correct. And I think that one of the things that is great about data collection today is it's become so much easier. And when we look at both the Edelman Trust Barometer and the Canadian Trust Index, both of them were surveying regularly during the pandemic, asking Canadians about trust. And from that, we can see what exactly the impact of the, uh, the We Charity scandal was on trust in the charitable sector. And both uh, the Edelman and the Canadian Trust uh, Bar uh, Index tend to suggest that there was a little bit of boost in charity leaders, confidence in governments, co confidence in businesses early in the pandemic. So in that initial phase when there's very much and we're all in this together, uh, trust in a lot of institutions went up. For charities, we can see that uh, as soon as we, the We Charity scandal was hitting the front pages on a regular basis, that trust went, uh, went away. So that the little initial bump was very quickly gone in the middle of that. And then, of course, as the pandemic went on, I think there's a uh, quite clear to many folks that there's a whole bunch of trust issues in various segments of society that uh, might be persisting for a very long time that uh, we can maybe get into later on in the podcast. But I think it's very clear. I mean, there was a little bit of a boost. The charity, uh, we charity scandal got rid of it altogether. But the fact that we had measurements be before the pandemic and in the initial phase of the pandemic after the scandal, we can really see that like there was a little bit of a bump and then a decline, but the, the, this gigantic decline in trust in charities is not specifically and entirely due to the We Charity scandal. It's clearly something that happened over a period of at least 12 years uh, between the Great Recession and before the pandemic. And, uh, you know, particularly, I think it was the five years after the Great Recession were ones that uh, really had a lot of influence on this. Well, you know, we've heard a lot from uh, leaders in the nonprofit sector saying, you know, because through the pandemic, the incredible work that nonprofits and charities did in the community has really sort of increased um, their status and, and, and proven uh, from the work that they do to the public that, um, you know, how critical they are. But this suggests that perhaps they're overstating that um, in terms of the ongoing impact on the public's attitude towards nonprofits and charities. Would you agree with that? I think it's a bit more complex than that in the sense that they can be correct and people can have lost faith in charities at the same time because the public is not a monolith. When we ask people whether they have trust in charity leaders, uh, you know, that can be very distinct. You may not have trust in charity leaders, but you might have trust in your local food bank or your local United Way or your local community foundation. That, that can be a very distinct concept. So I think there's certainly a lot of folks who 
have an increased increased appreciation of the work of specific nonprofits. Um, I don't know if that necessarily has gone across the entire sector or when people think about a generic charity, whether they feel like they have more confidence and opposed to the they, a, a number of folks see specific institutions that they feel like have done a great job in the pandemic and might have more confidence and faith in that institution, which is quite separate from do they trust this broad institution of charities and nonprofits of which there's more, you know, almost 200,000 in the country. Can, that's very, very distinct from whether you might have confidence in one's institution in your community or in the country that you've seen has been doing a great job during the course of the pandemic. And I think there's probably two different sides to this. I mean, I do think there's a whole bunch of nonprofits that did a great job and people appreciate it. They probably have more donors, uh, news coverage than ever. And, they, you know, they're rightly seeing the so much uh, waves of support. I do think there's others who are going to be hit with a much broader, just general malaise about the perception of charities that, you know, this might not be immediate, but I do think, you know, there's long-term consequences when people don't have trust in uh, these sorts of basic social infrastructure, in the basic social safety net, and all the critical work that nonprofits and charities do. Yeah, that's <clears throat> those are such important nuances. Thank you for clarifying. I'd like to understand, though, when we're talking about the declining trust of the public that, that was identified in these reports, are we talking about the leaders or the institutions or organizations uh, generally or both? Yeah, so uh, generally speaking, the majority of sources, uh, in particular the Enbrox Institute that, uh, data that we really were relying on as a, the lead in for this, it was trust in charity leaders. And so that is quite distinct from the institutions themselves. And, you know, I think um, it's, it's really an important distinction that I think really needs to be studied more, but really was not a topic that anyone was explicitly uh, looking at. I will say when the Mutart Foundation studies had looked at this in the early 2000s, they found them extremely correlated. So people who didn't have trust in charity leaders uh, also didn't have trust in charity institutions. The more recent studies haven't been trying to understand that correlation between the two. Uh, and I think it's an, but it is an important one because it is possible that people still have confidence in the institutions, but not the leaders. I do think that likely, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of overlap, but it is possible that confidence in institutions and leaders is becoming decoupled. And if that were the case, I mean, I, I think that'd be a fascinating topic of exploration, but I can't say with anything that we have information on whether we can reliably um, say that or not. One of the things that was really striking to me, though, looking at the study was um, the Better Canada study asked people about whether they felt that community organizations would help them if they were uh, in need. And I think this was really a striking point to me because the folks who didn't have confidence in charity leaders were also the folks who said they didn't have confidence that charities would help them when they were in need. They were disproportionately had lower education, lower income. So basically, we see this really... I think concerning trend of people who would probably need support the most are the least likely to have confidence in charities. They're the least like uh, charity leaders and they're the least likely to say that charities are gonna help them when they need it. And I think this is really, I think uh, a critical point coming out of what we talk about in the article is that the people who need charities when they're in a crisis are the ones where we're disproportionately seeing this crisis of confidence. And I think there's so many different uh, pieces wrapped up in that, that uh, charity leaders need to worry about. Because when people are reliant on charities, when, especially social service charities, when they're in the most need. Um, but there's so many other things that if people are thinking the social safety net doesn't work, they're not going to have confidence in charities. They're not going to reach out when they need it. There's going to be all these barriers to people accessing services when they need them most. And I think this is a really critical piece beyond some of the other pieces we talk about in the article of this is the point of why charities exist. And if the most marginalized people in the community are the ones saying we don't trust charity leaders, this is a, such a huge issue that I think needs to be understood and, and uh, better uh, resolved. Couldn't agree with you more. Um... I'm curious about how this declining trust in charity leaders compares with other kinds of institutions, such as government or uh, even for-profit corporations. Um, is there any comparison that can be made? Yeah, I mean, it, the, I think is there's a concerning thing here, which is trust in all of these institutions are declining. And uh, I think what was interesting to me is seeing that Confidence in governments, confidence in businesses, confidence in unions, um, 
these declined before trust in charities. So we see uh, around the Great Recession, particularly from the work that the Ambronics Institute had, trust in all these uh, governments, businesses, union leaders, just uh, plummeted. And I mean, it had been pretty steady for quite a while. And you can see that like right away in 2008, the surveys that were conducted, like clearly got trust in government, uh, businesses and, and uh, union leaders went down right away. However, charity leaders managed to, in 2009, were still quite high. So while other institutions saw this immediate decline, the char charity leaders actually had their trust remain high while everyone else's was declining. And somewhere in that period after, they sort of caught up. Charity leaders are now slightly above these other institutions. But I mean, the difference is so small, it's almost barely worth commenting on. But, you know, when we go back to 2009, the, the difference in trust in charity leaders versus say business leaders was quite substantial. So it went from being this thing of people really trusted charity leaders be, above and beyond other important institutions and leaders in the community to being they generally don't trust leaders of any sort and charities are, the, you know, among the highest of an untrusted group. That's an incredible story um, to tell and, and quite alarming. Um, now, this surveying and reporting was done almost two years ago now. We've touched on some additional reports that you know of. Do you know of any recent reports that provide insight into public trust of charities now in 2022 and, you know, at this point of the pa in the pandemic as we're emerging? Um, is there any sort of insights you might be able to give there? Yeah, so... Uh... I looked this up just before we were going because I was quite curious to see uh, before we started the podcast because I was quite curious to see what the most recent state is. Has any of this trust rebounded? Uh, and the answer, as far as I can tell, is no. Uh, particularly the Canadian Trust Index uh, did its surveys in both 2021 and 2022 and found basically uh, in um, it's the number of people who say they have trust in uh, non-governmental organizations as they're measuring uh, is basically still below 50%. It's probably the declines we've seen in the most recent two years, not statistically significant, but you know, in each year, another point of trust has dropped in charity leaders. And that's not enough with our sample size to say that it's like, it's definitely declined, but it's definitely not increased. And if anything, it continues to go down further. So like, I don't think this is, a, uh, you know, anything we could have said, attributed this to say, hey, the We Charity scandal was this temporary blip in trust and it'll all come back and it'll all be great absolutely no sign of that and if anything trust continues to decline perhaps a little bit further or i mean more accurately I say it's probably just flatlined and which is perhaps a good thing i mean after a decade of decline that you're not seeing even more precipitous declines but you know this is not what charity leaders want to see in tr in terms of how they're perceived no no question about that can you offer some implications of this overall trend of declining trust for example in your article you highlight the possibility that it could be related to an overall decline in donations during the same period could you sort of give us insights about you know what does this mean what kind of impacts it could have yeah i, I think um so I, there's three different facets that are particularly interesting to me in terms of trust, maybe, maybe at least three. Let me, uh, let's cut that later phrase. It. There's a few things I think are particularly critical uh, in terms of this decline in trust. One, in Canada, the vast majority of funding comes from government. And so if people are losing faith in charities, I think there's a real risk that as time goes on, people are not going to want to spend as much of their tax dollars on Canadian charities. And that will have profound implications for the sector. It will have profound implications for our social safety net. And I think this is the biggest real fear here. In the report, we have a concrete data showing that donation trends have declined over time, and particularly the percentage of folks who are claiming charitable tax donations on their tax returns. And we can see that uh, we, we see about you know, uh, about 25% of people used to be reporting it. Now it's about 19% of people are reporting charitable tax donations. Uh, so, I mean, it's very clearly the percentage of folks saying they're supporting uh, charities to the point that they're claiming on their tax return is declining. It's, it's hard to say why exactly that's happening. What we pointed out in the article is the time periods of where the declines were more significant also tended to correspond in that period where trust and charity also declined. It's hard to say whether they're actually related, which came first, which caused the other, but it's clear that fewer folks are donating charities and that dropped significantly at the same time as we see this drop in trust in charities. 
So I can't really tell you these things are definitely linked, but a lot of the studies in uh, the academic literature suggest like trust is such a critical driver of donating to charities. So, I mean, there's a lot of reason to suggest these things might be related, uh, even though that we don't have concrete evidence suggesting one might be the client causing the client. So, you know, folks are not maybe going to churches frequently. They might be less likely to donate to their church. The fact that they don't go to church might mean that they have less trust in charities. I mean, there's all sorts of other things you could also suggest that are probably interrelated in that, that would make it harder to partial this out. But I think this is really an important factor there. And of course, Charities are so reliant on volunteers, they're reliant on staff people who often are working at wages that might be lower than they could get in other sectors. And I think, you know, if we're, you know, then the, we look now at the uh, current economy when it's harder to get st workers and staff at any point, really, than at any point we've ever seen. And when we make that comparison, I mean, if people have even a little bit less trust in charities, and they're considering, do I want to work in the charitable sector or the for-profit for sector or government? I mean, when you see, say, sometimes wage differences or benefits differences, I think it's going to make it harder for folks to actually make that, uh, you know, that decision to take a career in the nonprofit sector versus other alternatives. So I think there's a whole bunch of different pieces that sort of tie into this that I think charity leaders should be quite worried about. And the point as well that I raised before is if people who are in the most need are not trusting charity leaders, I think there's so much that we need to worry about there beyond the revenue streams. Because, you know, we need to make sure that the most marginalized people who need the social safety net trust it, that they're, you know, aware that it exists, that they tap into the services that are going to get them back on their feet as quickly as possible. And I think, you know, when we see these trends showing that the po people who are going to need the services of charities most, particularly social services, do have this sort of declining trust, or at least uh, what we can say is like they had lower trust at the point in time it was measured in 2020. Like, I think that to me is the biggest, uh, biggest worry. But I mean, it's wrapped up in this revenue threat, it's wrapped up in this labor threat, and it's wrapped up into this donations thing that I think makes this uh, an issue that I'm kind of surprised that uh, has not necessarily been getting as much attention. And I think what we tried to do with the article was by looking at all these studies over such a long period of time is highlight this is a real thing that needs to be paid attention to because the implications are profound. And I'm surprised that this isn't a higher priority and higher area discussion in the charitable sector. I couldn't agree with you more, which is why we're doing this podcast on this subject, because we think it's important to examine and, and to actually, you know, search for solutions. Do you have any insight into what might be causing this decline in trust? Or are there any studies you're aware of that are researching this at this time? Yeah, there's very few that I could find that uh, we're really looking into specifically in the charitable sector. There's a lot more looking at why there's a decline in confidence in the uh, in institutions in general. And I, I do think, I mean, there's so much wrapped up in this. And if it was just charity leaders declining, you know, we might have a, we might be having a slightly different emphasis of what exactly it means. I mean, but it's very clear that confidence in so many different critical institutions has declined simultaneously. And I do think there's a much, much bigger picture issue here, which is, you know, a lot of surveys looking, you know, before the pandemic, even we're saying like uh, about half of Canadians were saying that the system is failing them. I mean, I, it's hard to separate out that when we look at half of people don't trust charities, half of people don't trust governments, half of people don't trust businesses, and half of people say the system is failing them, to me, that's not really a coincidence, you know? I, I uh, When people are looking and seeing, like, you know, the price of homes have gone up, you know, 400% in some uh, markets in, uh, in Southern Ontario, when their income's gone up 30 or 40%. I mean, clearly people feel like, uh, whether it's young people, whether it's, you know, uh, many people who might be working at the minimum wage or close to minimum wage, this is not working. And that is going to roll into lack of confidence in the most basic institutions, whether it's nonprofits, whether it's governments, whether it's businesses. I don't know if people can specifically say, like, why are things not working for me? But there's a lot of Canadians who feel like the last uh, 12 years or so have not been working for them. Uh, maybe last 15, 20 years have not been working for them. And I, I do think this, that's a, a much bigger issue. There's, there's other things as well, I think, that uh, really to tie into it, which one of which is the decline in sort of, um, you know, institutions and participation institutions. Uh, you know, there's the famous Bowling Alone book, which is the idea, uh, you know, that uh, 
in the old days, there was many more sort of opportunities for folks, uh, particularly folks from privileged classes, to participate in groups. And this was a common uh, sort of thing. Now people, uh, I mean, as the, the book suggests, they go bullying alone because their social networks are not as strong. People have increased feelings of isolation and loneliness. And I do feel like, you know, when people aren't seeing this day-to-day -day impact of not charities in their lives, in terms of, you know, seeing this as a prime way that they connect with other uh, people in the community, this is going to relate to, I mean, what's the, you know, a less of an understanding of what the point of charities is in the community. So I do think this sort of uh, decline is, uh, you know, related to it. But again, it's hard to say what exactly the role would be. And, you know, the fact that uh, from my standpoint, I, when I look at the, the pandemic and a lot of the consequences of that, I do think it's a risk factor for the long term, because I do think there's going to be a lot more folks who are isolated and the longer term consequences of that. I mean, when it's not charities and nonprofits that are providing them opportunity to connect, if, you know, if we can't find more ways to get so many of these critical uh, organizations back on their feet, healthy financially uh, and operating at full capacity, I think there's going to be a lot more longer term consequences because there are so many organizations that play such critical roles in building community, and a lot of them are really struggling. Uh, whether it's arts organizations, sports organizations, recreation organizations, cultural organizations, like so much of the work that they do that I think people value. I mean, they're just not functioning normally. And, you know, I don't think uh, there's a really an avenue for, uh, as it stands, to really bring them back to on their feet at the way they were before. And I do think there's going to be, uh, you know, longer term consequences to that on some of these uh, issues around trust as well. Yeah, it's, it, it really is sort of a deep and complex issue. Um, I, I would assume that this might even impact the way nonprofit organizations have the ability to advocate and pursue their mission work as well. I mean, if there's a lack of trust, then, then you know, their advocacy kind of work is going to be impacted by that in terms of, you know, um, how they're able to get a movement around making change, uh, presumably. Um, do you have any sort of thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, one thing I think is quite interesting as well is, I mean, I think it comes down to the distinction of just, there is uh, two avenues to this, one of which is a general decline in trust in general in charity leaders does not necessarily mean that specific institutions are still not highly trusted and can still have a great impact in their advocacy. There still comes down to this incredible role that individual nonprofits play in building relationships with people in their community, uh, building relationships with appropriate government stakeholders so that they, people have confidence in that specific institution. So like, I still think there's a lot of uh, charities that have profound relationships. They're trusted by people in their community. They're trusted by uh, the politicians who they might be advocating for change. So I do think there's that side of that. And uh, just because people might feel like in general, charity leaders are you know, less the source of, uh, you know, that uh, they have less confidence than they might have 15 years ago. There's, it's not to say like, you know, there's absolutely none. There's still so much uh, potential there and so much opportunity. And the experience of any specific nonprofit might be different from this broader trend. And uh, I do think a lot of large nonprofits have done a phenomenal job of, you know, building trust in the course of the pandemic, um, some smaller ones as well. Uh, so I, I will say that as a high level. I mean, it, it's, I've been think, thinking about that one a lot because people have also lost trust in government. So, you know, at the same time as perhaps, you know, they've lost trust in members of parliament, they've lost trust in their city councillors to some degree. So it's not like that. There, I do think there's a certain piece where they, you know, the folks they'll be advocating for are in the same boat. And I don't know exactly how that might influence the, the efficacy of their advocacy work um, because, you know, it's, it's, I think the, the folks who are trying to, you know, make a difference in uh, politics are, you know, understand some of the same challenges. But I do think the broader issue, if the, if the folks in office don't feel like the charity leaders they're talking to have the broad support of the public, or you know, understand the pulse of the public, or are able to communicate what the public wants, there's less incentive to pay attention to any of them. And of course, any specific charity that may not be the case. But I think the broader trend is one that people should pay attention to. Yeah, I, I, I'd be curious to find out from your perspective, since you've done such uh, deep work in, in analyzing this in, in, in the research, is there any particular additional research that you'd like to see done? What are the gaps in the current research that you think the sector could benefit from um, 
diving into in a more in-depth way for uh, you know, the, the betterment of the sector at large and the leaders to understand. Yeah, I think uh, one key piece for me is all of the studies we've seen most recently uh, that have talked about trust in charities and nonprofits have been conducted by as part of broader studies that uh, are not looking specifically at it. So the Edelman Trust Barometer is about trust in Canadian society. The Canadian Trust Index, similarly about uh, trust in society. The Better Canada series of studies was about a whole series of issues in Canada. So a lot of these ones that are showing these declines are single questions as part of broader um, series, which is great to help us establish that uh, what's the pattern over time. It's not great in helping us understand what we can do about this. So, um, or, you know, even trying to understand where is charity, uh, you know, is this across the entire population or specific groups of the population where trust and charity leaders is declining? So, I mean, I think there's a big piece of, if we don't have studies conducted specifically about the charitable sector, it's hard to unpack what this looks like. And most importantly, none of this research suggests like what we can do about it. And I think if we don't get into some of the research, trying to understand what we can do about it, understanding why this decline has happened, what are the things that continue to build trust? What are the uh, different pieces that will create more trust? I mean, even things like, you know, uh, what different, um, you know, marketing messages uh, could be, uh, you know, are res people respond to? I mean, there, I think there's a lot of different opportunities to try and understand uh, what exactly the charitable sector can do broadly to try and address this. And all I could really do with the studies I found was point out, hey, look, I mean, it's clearly a long term trend that we need to pay attention to the most critical pieces of what's the most effective way to remedy this. Can we do something about this? Um, you know, how can we target messaging? What's, what should the messaging be? Um, you know, which are the most important population and most important population groups to reach? Uh, and build trust in. I mean, these are all topics that we really couldn't explore to the depth that I think is important to understand with what we have. So like, I think uh, both, we need to continue to understand how this unfolds. And there's all these studies that will continue to suggest this longer term trend, but the most critical piece in any of this is understanding what to do about it. And there's really nothing. So, I mean, from my standpoint, I, I will say I'm a researcher. So I always say more research, but I think it has to be the right research. It has to be very targeted to help us understand what to do about this and opposed to just this ongoing measurement of how bad things are. I couldn't agree with you more because we like to provide solutions in, or at least some insights into what could be solutions in, in this podcast series. But, you know, this is a challenge that the data shows a dark picture, but no sort of way out. Um, I wonder if you could wrap up with a few comments on why nonprofits really need to care about this issue. You mentioned it's not getting as much attention as it should. Maybe, maybe you could highlight the main reasons why you believe um, that they ought to step up and pay attention to it. Yeah, so there's two sides to that. One of which I think nonprofits, uh, specific nonprofits need to be very careful and think very clearly about trust in their own institutions. So if you're a leader at a specific nonprofit, I do think you know it's something to really uh, look at over time to make sure that your stakeholders have faith and confidence in your specific institution and you're doing the work to ensure that people understand what you're doing, how you're helping, uh, and communicating clearly about the, the great work that your nonprofit's doing. And I think in any specific nonprofit, I mean, that might be the most important thing is communicating clearly about the benefits and the impact that your organization's having in the community. Because, you know, people just see fundraising appeals and never see anything about the, the work that, and the success and the results and, you know, they're not uh, things about there trying to like understand when you need help, here's how you get it. I mean, these sorts of messages being out there are also, I think, really important for people to understand, you know, these are the things that nonprofits are providing. And I do think if, you know, people are just exposed to fundraising messages from charities, it's probably not the, the most uh, reassuring message about uh, uh, the, uh, the work of the charitable sector. So, I mean, I think that's really important from the, uh, the work of individual nonprofits. We also see from a lot of research and uh, work done in the fundraising sphere that certain types of fundraising are uh, viewed negatively by the charitable, uh, by, by the public at large. So, I mean, if, the, if your charity is involved with any of those sorts of works, I think it's important to sort of evaluate whether the cost benefit is, uh, is worth it in terms of potential consequences of trust and confidence versus the uh, additional revenue certain things might bring in. And the more broad thing around the charitable sector is, um, 
it's i think you know when we look at the the decline in charitable donations for the sector i mean when we look at if the same number of people donated today as did 20 years ago as a percentage of the population i mean we're bringing in billions of dollars more so this is not a small issue uh again it's hard to say how much of this effect is causing or the cause of you know di broader disengagement with charities but i mean this is a multi-billion dollar issue just on the donation front let alone of this risk to you know declining government revenue over time so i mean when i look at this broad piece of what does this mean for the charitable sector i mean it's it's pretty substantial uh it's really hard to say you know will the you know Will it all happen at once? Will it happen declines over time? Um, you know, will reversing interest increase donations? I can't really say, but I mean, we are talking well into the billions of dollars at risk. And you know, if we start uh, jeopardizing trust, le leading to fewer uh, government contributions to the charitable sector, I mean, that's hundreds of billions of dollars that charities get from uh, the, uh, from government. So, I mean, the size of this issue is uh, is I think incredibly substantial. So I think from uh, what, what an individual organization can do might be small, what sector organizations can do and need to do and funders need to do. I mean, I do think folks need to be paying attention to this big picture issue. And I think there's a lot of initiatives that people are doing that will uh, hopefully build considerable trust and a lot of new attention on marginalized community, equity uh, seeking communities. And I think hopefully that does address some of the issues we, we talk about in the report of people who need support most are at least are less likely to have confidence in charities in a variety of different situations. Uh, so I think there is, you know, all sorts of work going on that hopefully can have substantial impacts, but um, I mean, a lot of work needs to be done. No, no question. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it strikes me that the, uh, the recent report uh, in the last, I think it was 2021, that reported on the lack of diversity among board members of uh, Canadian nonprofits uh, uh, was considerable. You know, the, the fact that there isn't the reflection on a lot of leadership of the communities that they're serving has also been sort of addressed as a really important issue and, and certainly might connect to this trust uh, the lack of trust for uh, the folks that need these services the most. Uh, you know, there may be a correlation there, but it sure would be good to have some data to kind of give us, um, you know, some, some way out of uh, these circumstances. I wonder if you could tell us where nonprofit leaders should go for more information or to stay on top of the future research in this area. Mm-hmm. I do think uh, one of the best sources, is, or the two best sources, I think, in terms of if you want to understand where the current state of trust is, is the Canadian Trust Index is measuring things every year. It's a much broader set of uh, data about trust in uh, Canadian society. Uh, the Edelman Trust Barometer similarly measures every year. And I, I think a lot of their broader discussions from each of these pieces about you know, and a lot of them, they give advice about uh, for various institutions, what needs to be done to increase trust. And a lot of it's very relevant for the charitable sector. These are two studies that they're going to keep going. Uh, they've been going for years and every uh, every edition I've read has had interesting insights on uh, Canadian society, confidence, trust, and sort of uh, so many roles that uh, the nonprofit sector uh, needs to pay attention to. So I think they're great studies. I'd love to see more studies conducted specifically in the charitable sector, trying to really unpack this and specifically come back to that topic of what can we do about this? What's gonna have the most impact for the least effort? And what do we need to do as a sector? And what do individual organizations need to do for uh, their contributions to this? Because, you know, like I said, the, the most recent studies from the Canadian uh, Trust Index showed that 47% of people had uh, trust in, uh, charity leaders uh, in, in NGOs in that most recent study. I mean, it's, it's not going up by itself. So hopefully, uh, you know, more research can understand ways to get this back up. And specifically, I think that those, when you talk about those groups that aren't represented well in the charitable sector, I mean, those to me are the most important. Well, I want to thank you, Steve, for this important insight into this really pressing and, and alarming issue for Canadian nonprofits, but certainly is something so important for their future. Um, your work is enormously valuable in helping organizations um, hopefully overcome the future impacts and to act in a way that hopefully reverses 
this disturbing trend and regain the confidence of Canadians. So thank you very much for joining us, Stephen, and sharing your thoughts and your analysis. Yeah, thank you for having me. Really a pleasure.